What's up guys, Clayford08 here today with another Market Watch Monday. Today I have the pleasure of doing this with one of my buddies on Discord, The Hulk, who has actually been teaching me a lot more about technical analysis over the past couple of weeks. So that's been really great to, to learn from somebody that has been doing this for a lot longer than I have. He's been trading on stocks and the Forex for years and he just recently in the past few months decided to get into crypto trading so he's actually been teaching me a lot more about technical analysis and so today he's going to be talking about the technical side of things and I'm going to be discussing the fundamental side of things as we go into today's cryptocurrencies. We're going to be discussing the same exact four cryptocurrencies that we talked about last week so Let's just jump right into it. The first one that we're going to be discussing is Bitcoin. So let's take a look at this chart, uh, Hulk, and uh, tell me what you see. Oh, the chart that you have p pulled up, I see coming towards the top over here. This angle that it's been driving up since uh, it made its low is very steep. Um. I think if it were to go ahead and break out a little bit more up past where uh, you were to put your mouse on the top left of your um, at your top trend line, okay. If it were to break, if it were to go ahead and break above somewhere over there, then it might be gearing up for a run towards uh, towards three thousand. Okay. But then another thing that I have in mind is uh, just from watching, one thing I monitor is the amount of shorts and the amount of uh, longs per day. And one thing I've been thinking about is a lot of people want to go ahead and get their Bitcoin cash. And also you're going to, I mean, depending on the price of Bitcoin cash, I guess Bitcoin itself might be getting repriced, kind of like Ethereum did. I figure you can go ahead and talk about that. Yeah. So if Bitcoin, if Bitcoin Cash is worth around say three hundred bucks, could that take three hundred bucks right off the top of uh, Bitcoin? Absolutely. Um, I mean, economics. You you can't you can't take money out of thin air, and if there's not that extra money coming into the market, then it's going to be taken from somewhere. So that money has to be taken from the price of Bitcoin because it can't just be generated. $300 per coin can't just be generated out of thin air. So that has to be taken from the price of Bitcoin. And I could definitely see that occur. Now, like looking at the the four hour chart and the MACD and the, the trend line, it definitely looks like this could potentially be a buy opportunity for Bitcoin, but knowing what we know about Bitcoin cash forking in the next, you know, 24 hours, that could be a huge upset for a lot of people that are buying right now. Am I right? I know. I'm, yeah. I know a lot of people that are buying and then, or people that own it. I think that there's so many shorts because, uh, you know, if the price is going to go down and then it goes down, um, they're essentially hedged. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> those people are going to be, yeah. And now that uh, Bitrix and Bitfinex are allowing the, um, they're going to be trading Bitcoin Cash. Well, Bitrix, support, Bitrix might be and um, Bitfinex definitely will be. So I've seen a lot of, definitely a lot of hedging on Bitfinex for sure. Absolutely. I mean, take a look at um, the price of funding right now. Like the the interest rate on funding is 0.7 right now. That is just insane. And that just goes to show you that a lot of people are trying to short it right now. Yeah. Which and I mean, in a market maker's market maker's uh, goal would be to squeeze those shorts. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, 
anything. If there's more, if there's more shorts than longs, then I don't know how many people are sitting in hardware wallets, but if there's a lot off exchange as well, they could easily just go ahead and squeeze those shorts. For sure. So I definitely think that Bitcoin is going to, um, you know, have implications on the rest of these other three cryptocurrencies that we're, we're about to talk about. So when, when talking about these next three, I just want to state that whatever happens to Bitcoin, there is going to be a reaction in the market yeah. with all of these other cryptocurrencies. We I'm always not particularly... See- not particularly looking to buy Bitcoin right now, but I'm definitely looking to play off of its volatility in the next few days. Oh, for sure. For sure. I would definitely do that. All right, let's move on to Ethereum. Okay, so taking a look at this chart that you drew up, um, what, what do you see in the near future for Ethereum? Well... If you disregard the uh, blue line that's um, just kind of in the middle there, I was just seeing if a uh, if there was a possible trading channel. But um, on this four-hour chart, I noticed that you can um, all all the way from the from from its from its highest point down to now, it hasn't been able to break above that that trend line. And uh, recently, it had news. It partnered with like Visa and Mastercard. Ran up to two, two sixty, I think. Hit hit right there, and then the next day, followed by a hack. And then um, it's kind of just. It looks like it's been just consolidating for the past few weeks here, and I think as we come up to like towards the end of this channel we'll see if it's able to break above if not i think it's going to i think ethereum could see could have a lot more downside so what do you think the new low could potentially be for ethereum um i think it could be if it, if it were to break its previous low, which is shown right there, I would say if it breaks below below that, just watch out. Okay. So you heard it here like, first, traders. <laughs> watch out for that low. <laughs> um, moving forward, though, I definitely... It, I, th- I think it would take Ethereum to announce Casper to... With all the press that it's had to go ahead and really make a huge breakout. Absolutely. Also, with the fact that the SEC has started to crack down on ICOs, that could definitely be another driving factor driving the price down right now because these ICO companies are starting to fear that, you know, they might be labeled as securities. And if that's the case, they won't be able to do business in the United States unless they, unless they register with the SEC. Yeah. So that's another factor. All right. So let's move on to uh, the Litecoin chart. So taking a look at this four hour chart for Litecoin, what are you seeing? Um, same thing. They, um, another consolidation move. I think that a lot, a lot of people have been hedging themselves with Litecoin compared to Bitcoin. Um, but that would become more obvious based on the activation of SegWit with, um, Bitcoin. Yeah. I mean, but, um, it's in a nice little trading channel right now, and if it goes ahead and on this four-hour chart and breaks out, I would expect it to break out above there, and then maybe come down and touch touch the line, and then go ahead and take off. Or if it's if uh, Bitcoin goes ahead and succeeds, and, and notice how all of this is coming down, like at the end of the end of the uh, 
box is um, the tenth. And supposedly the earliest that uh, Bitcoin could go ahead and get Segwit is August eighth. So that's a that's I don't a know really valid point. Um, and like I I completely agree with that. I think people are definitely using this to hedge themselves out of the rest of the market because you know uh, if you take a look at its moves over the past couple of months it hasn't nearly been as drastic as some of these other coins that we've seen this one always seems to uh, find a new uh, high and kind of sit around that for a while yeah like the the last high was what 50 55 bucks and currently we're sitting at 41 like compared to some of these other coins it really doesn't move around that much on the on the market no litecoin's always been pretty suppressed and it was all the way back down at 38 bucks or 30 bucks before it made its move to uh 44 dropped back down to 32 and then uh made its spike back made it to its uh, all-time high of 56. Absolutely. And now it just um it's just A or B, which um you'll see more when we go over the EOS chart, but in these consolidation plays it's kind of just to see where where it's going to go. And its best bet is to play it off of there or if you want to play it based off of the fundamentals, but I would expect some more volatility coming up. Everything seemed to be consolidating very heavily right now and all based upon what Bitcoin is going to do. And then uh, I guess during the last crash, which I actually wasn't around for in 2014, a lot of people moved into alts and then once Bitcoin was done, obviously, the, you know, the altcoin market was driven back up. So it's looking like people are doing the same here. A lot of people are sitting in alts rather than playing the BTC game. And with the SEC crackdowns and stuff, I will see what happens if, um, if, the, alt, if the alts really do rebound. Because I see that potential another potential hard fork in November, so could be a while for me before I think I see alts start to really like make massive moves, like um, like like stratas and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, before all of this confusion with Bitcoin, we saw some huge moves in the month of June. I, I definitely can yeah. see some more moves like that in the yeah you're talking like 100 200 percent moves yeah i mean i definitely think between now and november we could see some moves but i don't expect to see like gigantic for sure all right let's take a look at the eos chart so on this one you actually uh drew up some waves that could potentially come from from this chart so just tell right. us tell us about that so I, I drew the initial channel that shows um you know just from the low all the way up to where it is now and then i picked that uh one wick um, basically where it forms a triangle and he said in, and clayford had asked why didn't i use the one higher and uh, I drew the one that's higher and showed, well, it would show that it has already broken out. When really, I don't think that's the, uh, and, it's, and it's a lot harder to do TA on something so, that's so new in its infancy. On like a project like this, because you don't have much back history. Um, but this one here is also consolidating. And based off of, if you were to go off of this wedge, and if people do start moving their Bitcoin back into 
into things, I would expect to see a move like this, like option A or B. Yeah, absolutely. Either. And this could this could definitely be affected by some announcements that come from the EOS team, don't you think? Oh yeah, for sure. They, I mean, they they just you had mentioned they said something about the test net, and I picked that uh the little pullback around the looks around two forty mark is where looks like where it consolidated before. So there's some resistance there, and then to go ahead and make its new if, if it were to go ahead and keep going, it would I could see three dollars. Okay. If three dollars three fifty. Wow. That's that's that, that I mean that would take a while, but okay. definitely around more more around two fifty if it were to go ahead and have a breakout. What could you see and, happening? And remember this is a four hour chart, so Right. That's true. Um what could you see happening over the next week though with with this specific chart? this specific chart um well people do tend to like eos but depending on what bitcoin is doing i exactly what it exactly what it shows it's either gonna make a move or it's going to you know fall down some more okay you know if i think if i think if bitcoin is becoming devalued then people are going to look for alternative places to put their money so well, it's all going to depend on bitcoin okay so you personally if you were to have to choose between buying bitcoin at a cheap price or buying into altcoins what would you prefer to do i would prefer to buy into bitcoin at a cheap price why? I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be sitting in alt, waiting when Bitcoin is in it. When Bitcoin is bullish, and it's in a clear bull run, and people are only focused on making more coins by trading alts, that's generally when you send, send, tend to see alts move. But if you're in a de devaluating asset, and then flowing into say eos btc then this, this this chart here is actually us dollar market is though right but um as far as like altcoins i mean what am i going to get back out of it is i'm going to get more bitcoin and my bitcoin going to be worth more than what i got it for you know what i mean yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm still kind of undecided, man. I really, I really don't know. I mean, obviously, I'm a hodler more than anything. So yeah, you're more of a hodler, and I'm more of a either day trader or a swing trader. Yeah, I mean, I love trading the swings. Don't get me wrong. I've I've shown plenty of times where I've made some really nice swing trades, but. Um, yeah, I, I definitely like to support the projects that I'm interested in. Litecoin's definitely one of my favorite swing trading plays. Oh, for sure. Um, well, I think that's going to wrap up today's episode. Hulk, I really appreciate you coming on the show, man. This, is, this has been really awesome for me especially, and I hope that other people feel the same way. Uh, do you have anything that you want to wrap up? here uh, i do not just uh tell the traders to be careful of the volatility in the market in the next few weeks for sure for sure well again thanks for coming on the show hulk and uh we will see you guys next week on monday